During the cardiac cycle, the heart undergoes electrical current changes. This happens because in order for the heart to contract and allow passage of blood, there are electrical impulses generated by the nodes of the heart. If you record and detect these electrical changes on a cathode ray oscilloscope, we get a trace formed which is known as an electrocardiogram. Doctors can use this trace to assess the heart's electrical activity and any changes from the normal appearance may show that there's a problem with the heart. If we look at the waveform of an ECG, it's divided into these key areas. We have P waves. P waves represent atrial depolarization. Now normally in healthy individuals, there should be a P wave before each QRS complex. We have the PR interval, the PR interval begins at the start of the P wave and ends at the beginning of the Q wave. It represents the time that's taken for electrical activity to move between the atria and the ventricles. We then have the QRS complex. The QRS complex represents the, de the depolarization of the ventricles. It appears as three closely related waves on the ECG which you can see here. We have the Q, R and S wave. The ST segment is what starts at the end of the S wave and it ends at the beginning of the T wave. The ST segment is an isoelectric line that represents the time which occurs between depolarization and repolarization of the ventricles. Basically this means ventricular contraction. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization and this is the small wave which occurs after the QRS complex. We also have the RR interval, which begins at the peak of one R wave and ends at the peak of the next R wave, and it represents the time between two, two QRS complexes. And we have the QT interval, which, is, uh, which begins at the start of the QRS complex and finishes at the end of the T wave. And this represents the time taken for the ventricles to depolarize and then repolarize.